Hey guys, um, welcome to my lesson today, my second favorite cohort. But guys, being second place is, is fine. That's a good place to be in. You know, you're still right near the top, right? I mean, I know I only have two cohorts, but still, you're second place. That's pretty good. And uh, look at this, okay? We are, uh, let's talk about uh, where we're at here. We are on lesson 12 today, or sorry, I'm going to skip lesson 12 and we're going to do lesson 13 today and just lesson 13. Okay, so it's really not two lessons today, just one. So I think you'll find that helpful. And we're going to do resistance and Ohm's law and you're going to need a computer to do this. Okay, so you can do it from home. Um, and let's get right into it. So what I want to do is just show you uh, here. It's called the FET circuit lab. And I will push a copy of this into your um, course outline. Okay, not your course outline, into your OneNote, is what I meant to say. All right, so check it out. Okay, so what you're supposed to do is follow the instructions, okay, and collect some data. But I'm gonna help you do some of that here this afternoon. Okay, so take a look. It says part one, what is the slope of the current versus voltage graph tell me? Okay, now there's a website here. I'm just gonna highlight it for you. It says, this. Now, if you want a little trick, you should be able to see my whole screen here. A little trick is go to the search bar okay, of Google and just type FET, like P-H-E-T, and then go DC circuit. Then press enter. Okay, and then you'll see the DC circuit construction kit right here. It'll take you to this page, okay? And that's what the, where the link is on the, uh, on the paper that I'm gonna push into your uh, folder. Uh, in the meantime, you can press play here and this will come up and uh, you just click, don't go to intro, just click on the lab and that'll take you into this workspace. And it is in this workspace that we're gonna be doing our uh, stuff here today. And I'll see if the smart, yeah, the smart board will work. Okay, so here's a battery. I'm gonna put that into the workspace. Uh, I'm going to put some wires into the workspace also, a light bulb, okay? And now I have the three minimum requirements for an electric circuit are all included on here, okay? Um, I'm also going to pull out a thing for measure, oh, not that one, I don't want that one. I'm going to pull out this one for measuring current. Okay, that's an ammeter, and ammeters measure current. I'm also going to pull out a voltmeter. Actually, I'll leave the voltmeter for now. We don't really need it here today. All right. So this is the DC circuit construction thing, DC for direct current. And uh, I'm just going to show you basically how it works. I can attach a wire here. Okay, I'll bring another wire out. I can attach a wire to a light. Okay, and then another wire. I can attach to the power supply like that, and then that'll turn the circuit on. Okay, so here, once I've got everything connected, here I have basically a circuit, and we can see the electron flow flowing through the circuit. Okay, and that's basically it. Now I can also do this. I'm going to break this, and I'm going to take this meter and stick the meter in. And now you can see here that it's measuring the current for me. Now I can do more than that. I can double tap on the uh, battery and I can adjust the voltage as I please. Okay, so this is a variable voltage power supply. I'm gonna set it to 10 volts, okay? And I can just use that slider and those arrows to do that. And there you go. By the way, another interesting thing, you can use conventional current. Conventional current goes the wrong way. Okay, uh, electron flow is actually this way. So I'm gonna leave it as electron flow for now. Okay, but we talked about like the two different conventions for, for showing current, okay? All right, actually this is kind of cool. I'm gonna make a, make a circuit diagram. Actually, that is cool. I didn't even realize you could do that. All right, so anyway, I'm just playing with it right now, but let's go back to OneNote and we'll look at the instructions. So what you do is you start up that, uh, that circuit construction kit, okay, like I showed you. It says create a circuit with one light bulb and one ammeter. Okay, so we have done that. I just showed you how to do that. 
it says click on the battery and set the voltage to 10 volts. So check, we did that too. Now it says go to the voltmeter and ammeter, use the voltmeter to measure the voltage drop across the light bulb. Okay, uh, we don't need to do that. So we're gonna cross that one out. Okay, now it says add 10 to the voltage, repeat, oh, it says record your observations. All right, so what they want us to do is fill in this table and right here in this block here, we're gonna write down how much current is there when we set the voltage to 10 volts. Okay, so if you go back to the DC circuit lab here, here we can see that I've got one amp, okay, right there on, on the current meter. It says there's one amp and I did set the voltage to 10 volts already. So I'm gonna come back here into my sheet and in this area, I'm gonna write 1.0 amps. Okay, now in uh, where it says 20 volts, now here I have to change the battery to 20. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my circuit construction kit, change the battery to 20 by just scrolling it over to 20, there it's at 20, and I get two amps. So I come back here to my sheet and I write, whoops, I write, 2.0 amps. Now it wants me to change it to 30. So I change it to 30. Okay. Then I write down the current. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So I'm going to change this to 30. And I get three amps. And then the next one's going to be 40. So let's find out what that is. I think you can probably guess what it is. 40, I get four amps. Uh, it's not going to be hard to figure this out at 50, 50 volts. I get five amps. I'm going to write on this. Wow, I can write on this. That is so cool. So here's where you're measuring your current, guys. Look at that. I can write on it. <laughs> well, wonders never cease. That's actually really awesome. Okay, so there you go. Now, by the way, notice that our light bulb here is getting brighter all the time, okay, as we are increasing the, uh, the voltage, okay? We're getting more voltage and as a result, more current. Now, also notice I cannot set the current in the power supply. The current depends on two things. It depends on what the voltage is set at, and it also depends on the light bulb itself, a property of the light bulb itself that we'll talk about later. But let's go back to one note, okay? And we can fill in this whole column. We know right now that this is gonna be three, this is four, five, whoops, 5.0, 6.0, 7.0, 8.0. We don't have to measure it, but we see the pattern right away, okay? So now what we're supposed to do, if you read these instructions, I'm just gonna skip to this. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but with two light bulbs in series. So we did it with one bulb, so this one is finished. Okay, now we're gonna do it with two light bulbs. So what we do is we go back to the circuit construction lab, and I am going to actually break, oh, I think I might have to restart it. Oh no, there it goes, okay, pardon me. I'm gonna break the circuit here, break that. Notice how it stops flowing right away as soon as uh, the circuit is broken. So I'm gonna attach a wire here. Now I'm gonna put a second light in there. Okay, one here, and then the other one goes there. Now I have two lights. Okay, now I'm gonna go here to my power supply. I'm gonna change the voltage back down to 10, which is what it wants me to do. Okay, so I've got 10 volts. And if you take a look here where the current is, the current is now 0.5 amps. And you'll notice there's, it's quite a bit slower than it was before, okay? There's, there's less flow. See, so we added a second light and it affected the current. So what I'd like to do now is go back to, to one note here and we get, whoops, we get 0 0.5 amps, okay? With two light bulbs and at 10 volts. Now I go back to this app here. I'm going to erase that line that I drew. Okay, now I'm going to increase the current or the voltage, pardon me, to 20 volts and I get one amp. 
And let's just keep going, see if we can see a pattern. At 30 volts, I get 1.5 amps. At 40 volts, I get two. So it seems to be increasing by 0.5 every time. So at 50, this number here at 50 volts should say 2.5. Let's find out. 50 volts and 2.5, 60. Okay, at 60, it should be 3.0. So we see the pattern here now, okay? So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to go back to OneNote and I'm gonna write down the numbers. I'm gonna get 1.0, 1.5, 2.0, 2.5, 3.0, and finally 4.0, okay? So now I filled in column number two. So that one's done. Now they just want me to use three light bulbs. So I'm gonna repeat it one last time with three light bulbs. So let's go ahead and put three light bulbs in there. I'm gonna change my voltage back down to 10. Okay, so that's at 10 volts. I'm gonna erase this line, these lines here. Okay, and let's add a third light bulb. I'm gonna break the circuit here. I'm gonna bring out another wire here like this. Bring out another light bulb. Okay, and then attach my third light bulb. Okay, and now if you take a look at the current right here, you see that the current value has decreased to 0.33 amps. So I get even less current this time at 10 volts. So now I go back to one note. I'm gonna write zero, whoops, keep doing that same mistake, 0 0.33, okay? And let's continue, okay? So let's say, oops, I don't want the calculator. Let's say I go back to this, and now I increase my voltage to 20. So here's 20 volts, okay? And at 20 volts, my current right here is at 0 0.67 amps. So I'm gonna write 0 0.67, okay? Oh, I keep doing that. Okay, now I go back here again. And now let's see if we can identify the pattern. At 30 volts, I get one amp, okay? At um, 40 volts, I get 1.33. At 50 volts, I get 1.67, and finally at 60 volts, I get 2.0. So it seems to be increasing by approximately 0.33 every time. So this one was 1.0, 1 1.33, 1 1.67, 2.0, 0 0.0. This will be 2.33, and this one will be 2.67, okay? So there you go, we've now checked off the third light bulb. And by the way, the three resistors they're called, we don't have to do that at all. You're gonna get exactly the same results. So just put an X through that. Okay, and there is your data set. And what we've done is we've built a light, we built, just to remember what we're doing, we built a circuit like this, okay, and in the circuit, what we're doing is we're connecting one light and two lights and three lights together, and we're noticing the effect it has on current. Now, voltage is independently set in the power supply. So I can just drag this up and down to change the voltage, right? And that changes the brightness of my bulbs and how much current is, is drawn, okay? So there seems to be some kind of connection between the current, the voltage, and the number of light bulbs, okay? like how much current you're getting is being affected by both the number of light bulbs and the amount of voltage. All right, so let's see if you can figure out what the connection is. Let's go back to one note. Scroll to page two. Now here there's a graph, and I'm gonna draw one of these lines for you. Well, actually I'll draw more than one. I'll draw the first two lines. Uh, they want us to draw a graph of the data for voltage versus current, and we wanna use three different lines, and again, we're not doing the resistor, so you can cross out this, these three. Okay, we're just doing one bulb, two bulbs, and three bulbs. So the one bulb, I'm gonna choose a scale here. Voltage goes on the vertical axis, as you can see right here. 
current goes on the horizontal axis like that. So what I'm going to do is plot, I'm going to put zero right there at the origin. And that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 volts, maximizing my scale. Okay. Okay, so that goes from zero to 80 volts. And then I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, eight. Okay, and that is up to eight amps. The, the, the most current that we got was eight amps and the most voltage that we got was 80 volts in the data set. All right, so let's go to the data for one bulb. And they say to use a plus sign to plot the points. Okay, and that's for one bulb. So if you look at your data set, we're going to go voltage is 10 and current is 1, 20 is 2, and so on. So I'm going to plot these points using a plus sign. So I'm going to put, I, I'm actually going to put my first plus sign right there at the origin. Okay, when the, and then at 10 volts, it's 1, at 20, it's 2, 30 is 3, 40 is 4. Five, six, seven, eight. I'm sorry if I'm a bit off. The smart board is a bit off. Okay, now what I told the students to do in class because they were doing it on paper was to draw a line of best fit. Uh, the smart board won't allow me to draw straight lines very well. It's kind of a weird limitation that it has. I can try. Let me try. It didn't work well in class. Let's see if this works. Yeah, see, I already don't like it. Like it's. It's not bad, but okay, forget that. I don't like it. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm just going to draw it freehand. Uh, if you connect these dots, they should make a pretty much perfectly straight line. Okay. Um, use a ruler. If you were doing this on paper, you would use a ruler, but you'd have to print out the page. And, uh, and there you go. You're, you're going to have a hard time doing it in OneNote, just like I am having a hard time doing it in OneNote. So you might want to just print it out and use a paper or, or draw the graph on a separate piece of graph paper. If you have some, I have some at school. Okay. So there you go. There's your first line. So now they want us to repeat this procedure with two bulbs. Okay. And with two bulbs, I'm going to use a, a different color. I'm going to use red for the two bulbs. Okay. So at two bulbs, we have, we start at zero. We're going to have a, uh, at 10, we have 0.5, so that, that'll put it right there, and we have to use the letter X. Okay, at 20, we have 1.0. At 30, it's like this. Okay. And that is our line. And if you don't believe me, just look at your data set. Okay, and now I'm going to draw a line for this. And like I said, my smart board is not being super precise with me here today, you should use a ruler for that. And that's it. Okay, so now that is data set. This data set here with two bulbs. Okay, we did that. Now let's do three bulbs. Three bulbs, I'll use the color blue. Okay, at three bulbs at 30, we had one amp. So we have we're starting here at the origin. At 30, we had uh, one amp, which would bring me right here. At 60, we had two amps, which would bring me right here, okay? And then at 10, we had 0.33, which is something like right there. And then 0.67, which is something like here. And then 0.33, which is something like there. And then 0.67, which is something like here. Anyway, the, the picture starts to come together of this straight line that looks something like that. Okay, so just in case you're wondering, I used a black line for this one. I used a red line for the two bulbs and I used a blue line for the three bulbs. Okay, and those are my three lines. The slope of these lines is getting steeper and steeper and steeper. Okay, now here's what they want you to do. They say for each data set, compute a best fit slope. So this is the instruction right here. Um, I, I learned from my grade nines this morning that they didn't really understand what slope meant. So let me explain it to you. Okay. 
basically to measure the slope of a line is you're measuring how much it rises compared to how much it moves horizontally. So like, let me give you an example. Let's say I want to me measure the slope of the black line. Well, I can start anywhere and I'm going to use a rain a orange color to mark my slope lines. Let's say I start at this point right here. Okay. So I'm going to move across the line like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna pick the last data point here, and I'm gonna move up until I hit the line again up here. Okay, now what we call this part down here is called the run of the line. Okay, it's the run of the black line, and this is the rise of the black line. Okay, so what we define as slope is defined as the rise divided by the run, okay? So the rise divided by the run. And the steeper the line is, the higher the slope, okay? Now, what they said here, they've got this expression. I'm gonna explain that to you. Um, here, that's a triangle, okay? But in Greek, it's a Greek letter called delta, okay? But in math, so this is for math, delta means the change in something. Okay, now it's two words. Gosh, I'm having a hard time. Change in, two words. Okay, so if I say delta B, that means the change in and in this case, it means the rise. Okay, and I'll explain that when we look at the graph in a moment. If I say delta i, that means the change. I keep spelling change wrong. Change in. Okay, like that. There. Okay, change in current is delta i. And that's equal to the run. Now let me explain why that's the case, okay? So here we use this Greek letter delta to represent the change in something. Get used to it, you'll see it in math. Well, here's the deal. My run, okay, you see here the run right there. Well, my run for my black line that I'm trying to determine the slope, the run is equal to the change in current. It makes sense. I start here at two amps and I end up at eight amps. So what's the change going from two to eight? Well, it's six amps going from two amps to eight amps. That's a change of six. Now my rise is the change in voltage. Now I start down here at 20 volts down here and I rise up to the top to 80 volts at the top. So my rise is 60 volts. Okay. So to measure slope, you go rise over run. It's the rise divided by the run or delta V divided by delta I, or in this case, 60 over six which is equal to 10. And the units of slope would be volts per amp, okay? Because my rise is in volts, but my run that I'm dividing by is in amps. Okay, so now that's how you determine slope. And then you've got, this is the video, so you can come back and, and, and look at this if I'm going too fast for you. Okay, but here's the deal. For one light bulb, we get 60 over six, which is 10 volts per amp. That's what we get for the slope with one light bulb. All right, so what about for two light bulbs? Well, for two light bulbs, let me use a different color to do the slope. Let me use a rainbow color. For two light bulbs, let's start here at the origin, okay? And why don't we use the whole graph? So I'm going to go over to four because that's my, uh, my run. And then I'm going to rise up to 80, okay? So here, my rise is 80, and my run down here is 4, okay? So it's going to be for 2 
two guys is going to be 80 divided by 4, which is 20 volts per amp. Okay? So what I'd like you to do is I would like you to um, find the slope of the third line by yourself by just doing rise over run. I saved the hardest one for you, so aren't you lucky? Now the deal is, okay, notice that all three lines are straight. There's no curvature in them or anything like that. So the relationship between voltage and current seems to be a linear relationship, okay? Now there's this guy named George Ohm. He called the relationship between voltage, current, and something called resistance, he called this, whoops, I meant to highlight that. He called this Ohm's law, okay? Now, like, the deal is each light bulb has resistance in it, and it's that resistance that seems to be changing whenever you add a second bulb or a third bulb, you change the resistance in the circuit, and that will draw less current as a result, okay? So this resistance to current is actually called resistance, and it's measured in a unit that we call ohms after George Ohm, okay, who worked this out. One ohm is the same as one volt per amp. But here's the really cool thing. We don't use the letter O to abbreviate the unit because the letter O looks too much like a zero, and that would confuse everybody. So what we do is we use a Greek letter one lululemon <laughs> okay actually the lululemon symbol is the symbol is the greek letter omega okay and omega is my favorite greek letter in the, in the greek alphabet it's actually the last letter in the greek alphabet and so this omega is the symbol for ohms so please get used to it one ohm is the same as one volt per amp, okay? So there you go. Okay, and I'll let you answer these other two questions. And I will also let you, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna finish this here in a moment, okay? Um, question C, what is the resistance of a single light bulb? Well, the resistance is the slope of this line, okay? So the resistance equals the slope. So just let me tell you this. Equals the slope that you see in the line above. I just taught you how to do slope. So if you ask me, what is the resistance of a single light bulb? We'll just go to where it says one bulb. The slope is this number here. So the answer is 10. Okay, it's 10 volts per amp. All right, so by the way, there's another activity on the last page, it says, how would you determine the resistance of a pencil? Well, we just did one light bulb. So you can follow the same procedure, just replace the light bulb with a pencil. And then if you look, okay, I'm gonna show you the app now again. If you look on the margin here, you can just tap on the slider and you'll see that there is a pencil if you slide down far enough right there if I want to determine the resistance in a pencil, I can just delete these light bulbs by clicking on them and then clicking on the trash can. So if I get the light bulb selected, I can move these wires away. Actually, I can delete those too. I'll just delete the wire. And then we can stick a pencil in there. Okay. And then it will draw current as well. I can go back down to 10 volts, okay? And here's my light bulb drawing current. The carbon graphite in there is not a good conductor, but it's good enough that it does conduct electricity, but there is some resistance to it. So how would you determine the resistance? Well, it's all about finding the slope of that line, right? So just measure several values, maybe up to eight values. Again, plot the line and measure the slope. Or you can use an equation, which I'll get to in a moment. Okay, but yeah, so I'm gonna let you do the last page on this. And you can actually conduct the virtual experiment with the pencil on the uh, app as you see me doing here. All right, so now, um, let's, now that we've done the lab, let's talk about 
Ohm's law more officially. Okay, first of all, let me zoom out, this is zoomed in too much. Okay, first of all, the minimum requirements for an electric circuit, we've talked, I told you about this, but maybe I didn't write it down. Uh, number one is a power supply. And the deal with the power supply is it provides voltage and current, okay, for your, um, for your circuit. But obviously without power, the circuit won't work. Uh, you also need a conductive path, which usually consists of copper wire. It's insulated, but it could be anything. It could be, um, you know, tinfoil, you know, whatever. Just some type of usually, it would have to be conductive of low resistance, which means metallic uh, conductor of some kind. And finally, you need a device, okay? And device is the key word. A device that uses the energy and provides resistance to the, in, the, uh, in the path of the circuit. Okay, so it's gonna use up the energy and provide electrical resistance. All right, so those are the three basic requirements of any circuit. Now, Ohm's law, let's talk about Ohm's law. So resistors, okay? Basically, any load is a resistor, whether it's a light bulb or a phone or whatever the device is, toaster, okay? They're all resistors. The resistors, what they do is they draw current from the power source, okay, from the power source, but the amount of current they draw depends on the voltage and it also depends on the internal resistance of the load, okay? Those two things combined will determine how much current you get from the power supply. Now we already know that the slope on a voltage versus current graph is equal to the resistance. So I just wrote that here, but there's an equation that goes with this line that I've drawn in the box for you here. So this equation V is equal to IR is basically Ohm's law. Okay. It's the equation of the straight line. So that's what Ohm's law is. V is equal to IR. Okay. You don't have to memorize it because I'll give it to you on a test. I'll just give you the formula. But if you really wanted to memorize it, you can do something like this. You can go twinkle, twinkle, little star, voltage equals I times R. And there you go. Now you'll never forget okay, what the voltage is. Or you can use this triangle. This triangle is like all the other triangles where we're doing equations. It just allows you to do the algebra okay, for Ohm's law. It's pretty straightforward. Um, if I give you any two of those three variables, if I give you voltage and current, for example, you could find resistance. If I give you resistance and current, you can find the voltage. And if I give you, oh, pardon me. If I give you voltage and current, you can find the resistance. So it just depends on what you've been given and what you're being asked for in the question, how you're gonna answer them. All right, so here's the deal. I represents, uh, sorry, V represents voltage in volts. I represents current in amps. R represents resistance in ohms. And notice the Lululemon symbol, okay? Now let's do a couple of examples. Okay, a three ohm light is connected to a 12 volt source. What's the current then? That's the missing piece, right? There's three variables. So, and this is really like the relevant question. Like current is the thing you, you worry about in a circuit, okay? You worry if you get too much, if you design your circuit correctly, that draws the right amount of current from the power source. So let's say we connect a three ohm light to a 12 volt source. Well, according to the triangle here, okay, what you would do is you would cover one of these things. If I'm trying to find current, it would be, let me block this one out it'd be V over R. Now I'm gonna get my current back, okay? So it's V over R. Um, so I use that equation, I equals V over R, substitute in 12 divided by three, and I get four amps. So a three ohm light connected to a 12 volt source will draw four amps from the power supply. And what we're assuming here, assuming that the power supply can give this. So there are some like 
like a little double A battery cannot give you four amps of current. Okay. Uh, it's limited. It can only give so much current. Okay. If you have a car battery though, no problem. A car battery, which is, does coincidentally happen to be 12 volts, it'll give you four amps easily. It could give you, you know, 50, 60, 70 amps. Car batteries are made to give lots of current. Okay. So here's the deal. Let's do another example. Let's say in this case, the voltage is 12 volts again, but this time we connect a mystery device. We don't know what its resistance is, but we do see, we notice with a meter that it draws 0.45 of an amp, okay? And what I'm asking you for in this case is what is the resistance of that device? Well, again, we go up to our triangle, you're given voltage and current and you're supposed to find resistance. So what you do is you blot out um, this one, the resistance, blot it out and you get V over I is the formula for resistance. Okay, so let's go back up here or down here, I should say. Oh gosh, I'm getting ahead of myself. So here, I've already done it. You go V over I equals 12 divided by 0.45 and that's 26.7 ohms of internal resistance in that device. Now, let me give you, just on the side, before we do anything else, a phone charger. Okay, phone charger. Here, the voltage on phone chargers is usually five volts, okay? And we know that the current on uh, quick charge devices can be like, maybe three, four amps, but let's say, uh, let's lower that number a little. Let's say it's two amps. That was the old style quick chargers. iPad chargers used to give two amps to the old iPads. Okay, that was considered a quick charge. So my question for you is, okay, that if it's five volts and two amps, what is the resistance of your phone now this is, the phone is the resistor. So when it's charging, what is the resistance of your phone? Okay, well, let's find out. R again equals V over I, which would equal, uh, sorry, five divided by two or 2.5 ohms. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm not drawing that very well. Um, 2.5 ohms, like that. So 2.5 ohms of resistance, there you go. Now, I did include a little note down here for power. Um, we already know and we've already learned that power equals voltage times current. Now, we know from Ohm's law, this one is Ohm's law here, V is equal to IR. What I did was I substituted in for V, I times R into the power. And you get that the power equals I squared R, okay, as a result of that substitution. Now, you can also take Ohm's law and rewrite it as I equals V over R. And then you can substitute um, that in for the current in the power equation, and you end up getting that power equals V squared over R. Now, long story short, and I'm gonna put this in a box for you. Long story short is that there's many ways of calculating the power of a device. And remember, power is the rate that you're using energy. It's measured in joules per second or watts. There's many ways of calculating power. You have three possible options here, okay? Option one, option two, option three. Uh, and it depends on what information they give you. Like if I told you, look, the voltage in the device is 12 volts, and the current is two amps, or let's say the phone charger, five volts and two amps. What's the power consumption of your phone charger then? Well, the answer would be five times two is 10 watts. Now, if I told you the resistance of the device was five ohms, okay, and the current was three amps or something, you would use I squared R, okay, the second equation. So it just depends on what you're given and how you're gonna answer those questions. Okay. That's it for the lesson, but I do have a handout for you. First, let's get to the uh, homework outline. 
Um, do not do, do not do, I put this with the letter X, don't do this, don't do that, please. Also, don't do this, page 570, don't do it, <laughs> okay? What I'm giving you instead of this is a worksheet. So here's your worksheet, okay? I'm gonna show you the worksheet in a moment. So today's homework is one worksheet. It takes about half an hour, okay, to do it. I'm gonna show you that worksheet now. Uh, so you don't have a heck of a lot of homework, but please also finish the lab, that's part of it, okay? Because you weren't in class today, so it's gonna be a little more for you. All right, so let's go to the Ohm's Law worksheet. I did post a copy of it in OneNote already. All right, so these are very straightforward, okay? I'll do uh, one or two of them with you, uh, and then that's it, okay? So the first one, an alarm clock draws 0.5 amps of current when connected to a 120 volt source. What is its resistance? All right, so I want everyone to show one step. So I'm gonna go R equals V over I which is equal to 120 divided by 0 0.5, and that is equal to 240 volts, or sorry, ohms. Sure, I got my unit right, 240 ohms. So everyone can, can show me one step, right? That only took a second to do. Okay, um, let's do, here I'll skip down. In case you think the easy ones are early, they're all pretty easy. Okay, so let's take a look at this question here, number, uh, they're not numbered, so how much voltage this here would be necessary to generate 10 amps of current? So I want 10 amps, but I have five ohms of resistance. So voltage equals I times R, and that is equal to 10 amps times five ohms, which is 50 volts. Piece of cake, right? Okay, so there you have it. You do have to like draw a graph on the on page two, but these are very straightforward questions here. Just fill in the blanks, okay, on that last set of questions. So there's your worksheet for today. Uh, tomorrow, um, I'm trying to think if you need to bring your Chromebooks tomorrow. I'm gonna say yes, just in case. Like today they did, the, they did the virtual lab. We did it together, okay, and they used their Chromebooks. Tomorrow though, since we're done this, I'm not sure, but anyway, bring it just in case. We're doing more on circuits tomorrow. Don't forget, towards the end of this week, Thursday, actually Monday for you, very likely, there'll be a test, okay, on electricity. So please be prepared a week from now to have a test and then we have two weeks left after that. We're probably gonna have a final test that includes all the units. It's not exactly an exam. I'm gonna be giving you maybe an opportunity to create a study sheet that you can bring with you to write that test with, okay? So uh, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And uh, as usual, if you have any questions, don't feel shy to ask. All right, thanks a lot, and uh, we will talk to you soon.